This is a CBS News special report. I'm Margaret Brennan in the nation's capital. And Attorney General Merrick Garland is about to make a statement at the Justice Department after an extraordinary week involving the nation's top law enforcement officials and former President Donald Trump. On Monday, the FBI executed a search warrant on the former president's Florida home, Mar-a-Lago, as part of an investigation into Trump's handling of presidential documents, including classified information. This followed a subpoena issued to him this spring regarding documents the department was seeking. The FBI search led to a furious response from the 45th president, but until this moment, neither the Justice Department nor the FBI have commented. Uh, we will be bringing you those remarks uh, in a moment. With me here is Chief Election and Campaign Correspondent Robert Costa. Uh, Robert, we just learned that that subpoena was issued back in the spring. What is the timeline here? Why is that so significant? CBS News has learned new details about the chronology of this entire episode. It was preceded by a grand jury subpoena, a federal grand jury subpoena, back in the spring. Then federal agents met with the president's team at Mar-a-Lago, the former president, Donald Trump. But then it led to this search this past week. Uh, based on our reporting, some sort of breakdown and tension between that subpoena in meeting and what happened this summer. Also here with me is Catherine Herridge, our investigative correspondent. And Catherine, what Robert just laid out is important because it lays out that there were legal steps before Correct. this unannounced visit That's by right. FBI agents. And let me go to Attorney General Merrick Garland. Good afternoon. Since I became Attorney General, I have made clear that the Department of Justice will speak through its court filings and its work. Just now, the Justice Department has filed a motion in the Southern District of Florida to unseal a search warrant and property receipt relating to a court-approved search that the FBI conducted earlier this week. That search was of premises located in Florida belonging to the former president. The department did not make any public statements on the day of the search. The former president publicly confirmed the search that evening, as is his right. Copies of both the warrant and the FBI property receipt were provided on the day of the search to the former president's counsel, who was on site during the search. The search warrant was authorized by a federal court upon the required finding of probable cause. The property receipt is a document that federal law requires law enforcement agents to leave with the property owner. The department filed the motion to make public the warrant and receipt in light of the former president's public confirmation of the search, the surrounding circumstances, and the substantial public interest in this matter. Faithful adherence to the rule of law is the bedrock principle of the Justice Department and of our democracy. Upholding the rule of law means applying the law evenly, without fear or favor. Under my watch, that is precisely what the Justice Department is doing. All Americans are entitled to the even-handed application of the law, to due process of the law, and to the presumption of innocence. Much of our work is by necessity conducted out of the public eye. We do that to protect the constitutional rights of all Americans and to protect the integrity of our investigations. Federal law, long-standing department rules, and our ethical obligations prevent me from providing further details as to the basis of the search at this time. There are, however, certain points I want you to know. First, I personally approve the decision to seek a search warrant in this matter. Second, the department does not take such a decision lightly. Where possible, it is standard practice to seek less intrusive means as an alternative to a search and to narrowly scope any search that is undertaken. Third, let me address recent unfounded attacks on the professionalism of the FBI and Justice Department agents and prosecutors. I will not stand by silently when their integrity is unfairly attacked. The men and women of the FBI and the Justice Department are dedicated, patriotic public servants. Every day, 
They protect the American people from violent crime, terrorism, and other threats to their safety while safeguarding our civil rights. They do so at great personal sacrifice and risk to themselves. I am honored to work alongside them. This is all I can say right now. More information will be made available in the appropriate way and at the appropriate time. Thank you. Thank you all for your questions. But as I said, this is all I can say at this time. You just listened to an extraordinary press statement, not press conference there, from the Attorney General who said he is unable to answer questions that you heard reporters shouting to him um, at this time. But uh, as the Attorney General just laid out, he personally approved um, that this search warrant be uh, used to go into Mar-a-Lago, the 45th president's Florida home, to search for documents. Um, Catherine Herridge and Robert Costa are still here with me. And Catherine, uh, we heard from the attorney general that they are going to be making public mm -hmm. some of the legal documents Correct. in order to explain why this search happened. Mm -hmm. Now, everything has become highly politicized, highly scrutinized. The, revealing these documents will tell us what. Well, it's highly unusual to unseal a search warrant in an ongoing investigation, so this clearly shows an effort to be as transparent as possible. What you would see in a search warrant is the underlying evidence, or what the Attorney General just called probable cause that he confirmed had been signed off by a federal court before the warrant was executed. It would also include, include what they call an inventory or receipts. So when the FBI agents finish their work, they provide you with paperwork saying, these are your possessions that we have taken that could be returned in the future. And finally, he, he stood up for what he felt was the unfair criticism of the FBI agents who carried out that raid. He said, I won't stand by while their integrity is questioned. But again, an extremely exceptional set of circumstances but significantly, the attorney general is saying, we're going to let the motions in the court and the paperwork speak for us. We're not going to answer your questions. And the attorney general making the point that uh, it was the former president himself who issued a statement revealing Correct. and confirming mm -hmm. that the raid happened um, and that he could have made some of these disclosures himself, but has chosen not to. Now the federal government will. Um, Robert, I mean, you've been talking about the political impact of this. There will be scrutiny of the attorney general, who is a Biden appointee. The head of the FBI, however, Chris Wray, a Trump appointee. Those were FBI agents who went in there um, and conducted this unannounced uh, search warrant visit to Mar-a-Lago and removed items from the former president's home. What does this uh, become in our sort of public discourse now? The fact that we will have this public disclosure of what was used to justify this search. This was an extraordinary moment in American history. An attorney general took ownership of the decision to have this search of a former president's home. He stood by that decision. And now, with his remarks, we understand that this investigation, a grand jury investigation of how a former president and his associates handle documents, has gravity to it, is seen as a very serious probe by the Attorney General of the United States. We know they're talking to associates from the president's inner circle. They're going into his home to get boxes of documents. The question now is, what were they trying to find? What have they been told was in the documents in terms of information from the administration, national security documents, what was in there? The Attorney General underscored today with almost a rhetorical marker that this matters to him mm -hmm. and it's very serious. And we know that the Biden White House, Catherine, has made a statement saying they had no advance notice of these remarks today or that uh, this revelation would be happening. Um, in terms of the legal mechanisms with law enforcement, what does happen next? So practically speaking, when you unseal a record in the court system, you can go into a public filing and it's no longer with a restricted header. It then becomes available for review. So the public can read it. The public would be able to read it. I, I, my question in this case, Margaret, is whether there actually may be some redactions in these documents. Just because they're going to be publicly available doesn't mean that all of the information will be there. They'll want to protect sources and methods, and that may well be evidence that be, that became the court's probable cause 
to get them through that door to a search warrant for a former president. But this is an incredible amount of transparency that mm -hmm. y you never see in an investigation. These warrants usually stay sealed until the investigation is over or a decision is made whether to pursue charges. And this all has to do with documents the former president took with him to his private home. Mm -hmm. And the question now is what was in there Correct. that so justified these extraordinary actions uh, and this search. And we will have continued coverage. I know all of us have phone calls to make. Uh, <laughs> right. Catherine and Robert, thank you so much for your analysis. Our coverage here on CBS will continue on the streaming network, your local news, and tonight on the CBS Evening News. This has been a CBS News special report. I'm Margaret Brennan in Washington.